Hi everyone, it's Rachel back with Shades of Orange and today I'm once again wrapping up some recent horror reads. This time I read a creepy possession story, I read about an indigenous monster, and I also read a true crime book that is basically making me question my whole career. Lots of good variety here, so let's get into the books. First, let's start with Legion by William Peter Blatty, which of course is the sequel to The Exorcist, which is one of my all-time favorite horror novels. I think most people know the premise of The Exorcist, and this one takes place after the fact and follows the same detective. In this one, he's investigating a string of murders that seem to have a religious connection. This book does tie into the first one, but in a lot of ways, it really could be read as a standalone. Now, I went into this one with tempered expectations because while I love the first book so much. I'd heard from many people that the sequel was good, but not as great as the original story. And I would echo that sentiment because that was my experience as well. This story has a lot of discussions of theocracy and just a lot of philosophy around humanity. And I gotta say, if it was a different story, if it was written by a different author, I would have called this book really preachy. But for whatever reason, because it was in the tone of The Exorcist, I really enjoyed it. But keep that in mind, it definitely is a book that has a lot of ideas and the author is definitely pushing a lot of thoughts and philosophies onto you as the reader. But like I said, I ended up really enjoying it. There's just a lot of discussions between the main characters. And it does tie in with the first book enough that it definitely works as a sequel. I would recommend reading The Exorcist first, mostly just because everyone should read The Exorcist. If you haven't, you should. And I know that there is a movie that was based off of Legion, which I have not watched, so I can't speak to that. But as a book, I thought it was well done. I will admit that the beginning was a little bit slow. While this is classified as horror, most of the story reads like a mystery and a slower paced one where they're going around talking to people and there just isn't a lot of action. It's not like today's thrillers where they're full of, you know, gunfights and car chases and all of that. Instead, it's very quiet in comparison, but towards the later half when it does pick up those potential supernatural elements, I really did enjoy where it went and I would recommend it. I ended up liking it a lot. So not as good as the first, but still definitely worth reading. Next up, we have Crota by Owl Going Back, and this is a monster story that is set in a community where a man is found grisly murdered, and the town folk at first believe that it is a bear, but that doesn't really make sense because there are no bears in the area, and so the local indigenous population actually believe that it is a monster, a indigenous monster called the Crota that has possibly emerged and is coming for them all. So this is a story that follows a small group of hunters that are going out to find out the monster, whether it be a bear or possibly the Crota, that is out and killing people. And I gotta say, I used to read a lot of monster horror stories and I got a little bit burned out on the subgenre, so I went to this one a little bit tired of the tropes, but I picked it up because I really enjoy a diverse aspect to my books, and this one of course offers an own voices perspective, and particularly I do have a really soft spot for indigenous stories, but what I learned from reading this is that the aspects of indigenous stories that I enjoy so much tend to be the more contemporary ones. I really enjoy stories that speak on the current state of being an indigenous person in either the US or Canada and life on reservations and so forth. While this one certainly did have some of those aspects, for the most part, it was more based around indigenous mythology, which is an interesting topic, but I'll be honest, it's just not a topic that personally speaks to me, so I like this book, but not quite as much as I hoped I would. The author has written quite a few other books, so I definitely plan to check those out, because while this book wasn't an all-time favorite, I still really enjoyed the storytelling. It was fast-paced. It was also very gruesome, harm to animals. I do need to put in some content warnings here, so know that it's gonna be grisly, it's gonna be dark, and it was just an engaging story, so if you can tolerate those content warnings, definitely one that you might wanna check out for yourself. I thought it was fun and yeah, would love to see more people picking up this hidden gem. From there, I read The Association by Bentley Little and this is about a 
married couple that move into a gated community. They find a home that they want to turn into a beautiful place for them to live. However, they find out that this gated community has a very aggressive association that runs the place. And from there, things begin to spiral because without realizing it, they start to break some of the rules and they start to get different sanctions. And as they go along, the rules start to get a little crazier and crazier and things spiral downwards as you would expect from a horror novel. This is one I wanted to pick up because I've heard really good things about it and it definitely, in my opinion, is one of the best. I've read several of his books, but he has a really big backlist, so I definitely need to read more by him. This would definitely be a lot of fun to pick up for anyone who's ever had to deal with a housing association before. I personally have not, but despite that, I did really enjoy the premise behind this. If I had a complaint about this one, it's actually the fact that I expected the book to get crazier than it did. And that just comes from the fact that I've read a lot of Bentley Little and I know how weird his books can get. And so this one actually seemed a little bit mild, but keeping that in mind, I still have to give content warnings for harm to small cute animals as well. There's certainly lots of death and mayhem and craziness that ensues. But despite all that, I actually, wanted more and expected a bigger climax. I just think his books are really fun, so they never tend to be, again, like five-star reads for me, but these are perfect if I'm ever feeling kind of slumpy or don't know what to pick up. I always know, for the most part, what I'm gonna get from his books, and I enjoy them. They are not for everyone. He definitely delves into the weird, and I mean weird in the uncomfortable meaning of the term because he definitely writes things that just are awkward and he just goes to some strange places. So not for everyone, but honestly, he is an author I tend to enjoy. So I definitely will be picking up more of his books. I would love your recommendations for those of you that also read Bentley Little. Which other one should I be picking up next? And finally, I read a true crime book and that was The Killer Across the Table by John Douglas and Mark Uslak. This of course is written by the person who is the mind behind the Mindhunters first book and then TV show that was on Netflix. And so he was the FBI criminologist who basically started typing and analyzing why serial killers do what they do. Before that, it wasn't really studied in the same way, but he went to various prisons and interviewed these dark and despicable people and really started to be able to predict certain traits that might be tied into uh, sociopath behavior and so forth. And I found this book to be very fascinating because what it is, is it's a collection of several case studies focusing on a group of serial killers that he studied and explaining just the different, again, typologies through these cases. And this really scratched my itch for criminology because for those of you that don't know, which is probably most of you, in high school, I really wanted to go into criminology. I really thought that that was gonna be my career path. My family really pushed against it. They didn't think it would be a very positive experience and maybe they're right, but this book really reminded me of that and it made me really think about what that life would be like. And certainly, I mean, you're dealing with the dark part of society and it's grisly and brutal. All the content warnings in this book, I've got to say, it deals with some of the most disturbing serial killer cases I have ever read. And of course, because it's true crime and not fiction, like most of what I read, it's based around real events. So you have to acknowledge that there were real victims. This actually happened. And that certainly makes it a harder thing to stomach. All that being said, I found this book to be very engaging. I've said so many times that I can be a little hit or miss with nonfiction because I do enjoy a good narrative drive. I like something that fast paced. I also like stories that are very focused and concise and I often find that true crime can go into so much detail that I kind of get bogged down in the mundane details that they put in place but this one really kept it short and sweet. It for the most part is more focused about the serial killers themselves but I do think they do a good job of acknowledging the victims and painting a picture of who the victims were which again is something that can be not always well done in true crime that we really glorify the serial killers themselves. So I thought this book had a good balance and yeah, it was just very readable. I flew through it. The first section, especially about the first serial killer, I was completely glued in and just wanted to know what had happened to this young girl. So again, all the content warnings, 
everything you could expect about terrible people doing terrible things, but if you are okay reading that, this book was absolutely gripping. Definitely one that will appeal to people like myself that normally read fiction, and I definitely recommend checking it out, whether or not you've watched the TV show. I've watched some of it. This is entirely new, and will just leave you thinking about it for quite a while. So that is it for this video. As always, I would love to hear your opinions down below about the books I mentioned. Which ones are you interested in checking out? And I'd also like to do a call out for more true crime recommendations because I keep saying that I want to read more of the genre and I should probably do that. I would also love if you consider subscribing if you're new here. I read a lot of horror, thrillers, science fiction, and fantasy, as well as apparently some true crime as I'm talking about in this video. So if you're already subscribed to my channel, you can still help me out with a thumbs up and sharing this video around online. Thank you so much for watching. I will talk to you again soon. Okay, bye-bye.